Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the North Yorkshire Local Government Pension Fund meeting this morning. Um, can I, first of all, before moving to the agenda, just read a piece that I need to. Um, this meeting is taking place under the uh, officers delegation scheme of the County Council which gives the powers of the decision to the chief executive um, as it is normal in cases of emergency. And the chief executive will take any decision which could be taken by the council, the executive or a committee. Following on from the expiry of the local authorities and police and crime panels, coronavirus, flexibility of local authority and police and crime panel meetings England and Wales Regulations 2020, which allowed for uh, committee meetings to be held remotely. The County Council resolved at his meeting on the 5th of May 2021 that for the present time, in light of the continuing COVID-19 pandemic circumstances, remote live broadcast committee meetings should continue with any formal decisions required been taken by the Chief Executive Office Officer under his emergency decision-making powers and after consultation with other officers and members as appropriate and after taking into account any views of the relevant committee members. The approach will be reviewed by full council at its July meeting. Um, so that uh, is just to tell you exactly what is happening in today. Um, so can we move on now to the agenda? Um, so welcome to everyone I've said already. Uh, our introductions, I don't think uh, anyone needs any more introductions. And apologies, I believe we have apologies from Andy Soloway. Is there anyone else, Stephen? No, Chairman, no more apologies. OK, thank you. Um, can we move then to item two, minutes of the committee meeting held on the 5th of March 2021. May I sign these as a true and correct record at a suitable time? Move, Chair. Are the seconded? Yep. Yeah, all agreed. Thank you very much. Item three is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? No, none received. And item four is exclusion of the public from the meeting during consideration of uh, the items listed on the agenda. At the moment, it is item number eight on the agenda. I propose taking that item uh, last after we've completed every other item, but there are also uh, exempt parts to um, one or two other uh, uh, items that if we get into personal details, we will go into private session four. But at the moment, we're only asking for uh, exemption on uh, item number eight. Will someone formally move? Move, Chair. Seconded. Thank you. Item five is public questions and statements. Uh, none received, Chairman. And item six is moving straight on to item six, which is the death benefit, which is a, a report um, that I'm going to go to uh, Philippa to report on. Um, again, this is most of this is can be done in public session, but if we get into any personal details, we will go into private session. So, Philippa. Thank you, Chair. Um, so we have uh, brought a death grant decision to the committee because we are unclear as to what we should do with it. So uh, Mrs E was a deferred member of the North Yorkshire Pension Fund and died on the 1st of January 2021. Um, the member had completed a nomination form in October 2008, nominating their sister to receive 100% of the death grant. 
Subsequent to that nomination, the member married in March 2018. Um, the member did not update the nomination following the marriage and um, we have received family information forms from the husband, the father uh, and the sister, which are attached um, at appendices one, two and three. From the information provided, we understand that the husband was not living at the same address as the member at the time of death. There are no children and there's no will. Um, and it's just really for members to confirm who they would wish us to pay the death grant to, please. OK, um, from the chair, can I say that I've read through this quite carefully. Um, I, I will ask for any other comments. Um, my view at the moment would be there are no uh, compelling circumstances that would lead me to believe that the um, that there's the form signed by the member should be changed. Are there any other comments that either agree or disagree with that? Patrick. Thank you, Chairman. I agree with what you suggested, having read through the report and <coughs> the statements from um, various parties. Thank you. Um, David. Like Patrick, I too have read through the papers that Philippa has provided, and I agree that, in my view, there are no grounds for changing the um, nomination of the member back in 2008. Um, Cliff. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I've read through it uh, and uh, the balance of probability on what evidence we have, I would suggest that we are safer and better keeping it uh, as it was and going to her sister. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm happy to make that a formal proposal then if someone will second. Second that, Chair. Thank you. Um, can we, uh, we can't really do a show of hands all in favour, but are there any dissenting voices to that? Thank you very much. Uh, that is carried. And we then move to item eight on the agenda. No, sorry, item seven on the agenda. Um, and that is a report of the Treasurer, the administration report. Um, Am I going first of all to Gary? Go straight to Philippa if, if that's OK, Chair. OK, Philippa. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just to, um, I'm not going to go through it step by step, but just to pull out the, the salient points <coughs> there. Um, the pension administration team continues to be very busy and we have seen a significant upturn in demand um, since the start of the year, presuming that's because things have started to open up again and COVID restrictions have started to ease and people are getting back to life as normal. Um, so there has been a significant upturn. We continue to work through that and our priority continues to um, maintain the service to our pensioners and new retirees to ensure that payments are made correctly and on time. Uh, we have started work with the annual benefit statements for this year. Um, it's gathering pace and to date we've received 170 year-end submissions out of 195. That's We've probably got them all in now because that was um, an update sort of at the towards the beginning mid-May. We've posted 77 of those files to member records and raised the queries with the relevant employers and of those returns we'd had 58 through our online portal iConnect um, which means that we don't have to do any manual intervention with them um, those 58 which is great so that's eased a little bit of pressure this year and the intention is that obviously we'll have all our employers online next year so the manual intervention will be dramatically reduced. That obviously eases the pressure on the production of the benefit statements by the 31st of August deadline. Uh, the main initiatives we've got ongoing at the moment are our um, data reconciliation and our administration system project. So the data reconciliation project is nearing a close. 
Whilst we managed to work through the majority of the differences identified for the April payroll, we still have approximately 2,000 records to look at, which we'll be working on over the next few months. All those pensioners that were identified by um, ITM as being overpaid were corrected and written to before the April payroll. So it's just those that have been identified as potentially being underpaid that remain. Uh, we're looking at them as a belt and braces exercise as some of the starting positions provided to ITM haven't necessarily been correct and they require a file review to ascertain the correct position to roll them forward from. So it's very much a belt and braces for the remaining um, numbers that are left. Um, there's been one new breach added to the breaches log since the last meeting. Um, this was caused by a member of staff not following the agreed process for printing and posting of outgoing mail. We've spoken to that individual and staff are now reminded regularly of the correct process to follow. Um, Pension Board did review the breach in their April meeting and agreed not to report to the regulator in this instance. Um, the administration system project um, continues. Uh, the three main work streams are progressing well with 76 employers now on board through to iConnect. Um, we've paused the onboarding work because we're dealing with the year end and the annual benefit statement process, but we will be picking that up again um, September onwards. And the target is to have every employer on board as well before next year end. Pensioner payroll migration has on the whole gone very well. We successfully completed two parallel payroll runs in January and February and switched over to the interim system for the 31st of March payroll run. There have been some teething issues and the main one related to the omission of building society roll numbers when we transferred the data. This um, affected approximately 800 pensioners. And what this meant was that we'd paid the payments to the building societies without a roll number, which we were advised by the building societies meant that they would return the money to us because they couldn't allocate it. Um, following the, that information and discussions internally, we decided the best cost of action was to make a second immediate payment so that we didn't leave any pensioners without money over the Easter weekend. Unfortunately, it's since transpired that that the building societies have managed to allocate the original payments to the account holders. So we're now in the process of recovering the overpayments from those affected pensioners. Um, we've contacted them and we gave them the option of either paying us immediately um, through a, a card payment or a bank transfer or to have it deducted from the May payments. So the May payment was made on the 28th of May. So we sh have now recovered all those overpayments. Um, the next main thing that we're starting to gather pace is the McLeod project. So this is where the underpins that were put in place in 2014 when the scheme changed have been challenged in court and have been proved to be age discriminatory. And we now need to retrospectively apply the underpin to every member in the scheme at that time. We have um, appointed Aquila Haywood to undertake that work for us and they're our um, administration software provider and they will do the data gathering element for us. That work is due to commence shortly and should last about 12 weeks. Are there any questions so far? No, OK. Is there anyone? No, carry on. Right, um, and the the last thing from me is regarding the outstanding death grant case. As you're aware, we do have an outstanding death case from uh, the last meeting and indeed the meeting before that, where we're waiting for some further clarification on the life insurance policy. Um, I did speak to the parties, the two sides uh, in that case, and I'm just waiting for further information, but I haven't had anything to date. I'm going to chase the widow solicitor today um, to see if we can get something um, for in time for the next meeting so we can progress that and get that closed off. OK, um, that's it from me. Thank you, Philippa. Thank you, Any Chair. comments or questions from anyone on that whole report? Christian. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, a number of uh, quick questions. 
one for clarity for, for my sake. On page 54, we've got a list of exited employers. And I'm just wanting some clarity as to why the employers are exiting. Is it that they've they've gone uh, bankrupt? Is it, you know, what are the reasons? Just so so I can be clear. So exiting employers, a lot of these will be because they have um, lost the contract that they were appointed for. So the catering and cleaning contracts particularly, <clears throat> um, they change quite regularly. Um, some of them, like the Joseph Rowntree Charitable Trust, they withdrew from, from the fund. They closed the fund to their members. Um, end of contract, or it could be that they were very small and the last member has left or retired. So there's no more employees, although the, the business is still running, but there's no more staff that are eligible for the, for the local government pension scheme. OK, thank you very much for that. Can I can I go on with the other points, Chair? Yes, go on. Chair. Um, the, the second point is uh, page 56. Um, I have to say this is far too small for my eyes and I came to mm. the conclusion I'd need a, a hamster or a termite to help me read it because of the font size. Um, it would surely be beneficial if the, if the list of breaches just could be bigger so that we can read them comfortably. So that, that's just a, a point to note. Um, and, and lastly, and, and I know this is somewhat tedious, but I noticed that on page 57, uh, the corrections that I asked for last time haven't been made, and I'm still listed as not having attended meetings that I couldn't possibly have attended because I wasn't invited. Um, and that there are legacy councillors from City of York Council being listed as not attending meetings who've probably not been eligible to attend for several years. So can that be corrected, please? Uh, so apologies for that, because I know that was brought up at the last meeting as well. Um, uh, so can we can we go through that one? Um, yeah, there's... there's Chairman, in, in answer to that, apologies, yeah. I thought I had amended it, but obviously a, a previous version has found its way back in there, so I'll ensure that the new version that I made for this time is put in from, for next meeting. Right, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, just one last quick question, please, Chair, and it's going back to 3.3 um, in the report just really helpful to have an understanding of uh, why we've not hit the target for the measured work completed. I formed the impression that this might be that we're getting far more people communicating with the fund, I think you suggested, as the um, as uh, we move on from the worst of the pandemic. But could you just please clarify why we're not hitting that target and, and what you think might be done to help? Yeah, so there's there's two issues that why we're not hitting it. First of all, is the fact that we've got the the major projects on the go. So the pension payroll, the employer onboarding project, we're working on the website. So um, for the first six months of this year, we're very heavily involved with that, and that pulls resource from the administration function from doing the actual work, and also the the significant upturn in demand. Um, we are addressing it. The payroll project will, um, when we get the merge service at the end of this month, beginning of July, we will start to feel the full benefit of that project. So we will then start to see a positive impact on resource from that. And also I'm putting measures in um, around little internal types of mini projects to address the demand that's coming in so that we can turn the work around quicker and make sure that we do get the target. We have managed to increase that percentage in the next quarter, um, April, May, June, that has gone up to 94. So we are heading in the right direction. It was just that the, the demand for the projects in, in the January to March was significant. OK, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can I now go to David, please? Thank you. Thank you, John. 
Um, just to um, uh, elaborate a little on, on, on the breaches uh, point, if I may, Chair, uh, as Christian's already referred to, page 56 uh, um, reflects the breaches uh, within the fund over the last several years. When I became aware of the most recent one, which is the final one on the list on page 56, I had discussions with officers to understand the issues uh, and what led to the breach. The Pension Board considered it at its meeting in April, as Philippa has already said. Um, um, you'll see from page 56 that the breach was reported to the Data Protection Officer, uh, which for the uh, Pension Fund is very tall. They assessed the breach as low seriousness and that no further action uh, was required over and above what, what, what Philip has already mentioned. At the April meeting, the Pension Board agreed that there was no need to report to the pensions regulator. So when you get to the recommendations in 8.2, uh, Chair, um, my recommendation to members of the Pension Fund Committee is that there is no need to report. Thank you, David. Can I now go to Mike, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a general comment, uh, as ever, uh, despite some slight anomalies, there is a significant amount of work and significant challenges in administering this fund. Uh, and I think uh, I'd just like to pass on my personal thanks to Philippa and the team for the work that they do. And perhaps that might be recorded in the minutes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, any further comments? I don't think there's any further speakers indicated so far. So if not, can we go to the recommendations? They are on the bottom of page 48. Paragraph 8.1 is to note the contents and 8.2 is the breaches log, which David has uh, re recommended and so has Philippa actually. So can we uh, agree that we don't um, report the breach to the pensions regulator and can we note the report? Can someone propose? Move, Chair. Seconded. Thank you. All agreed? Right, thank you very much. Now we are going to item nine now. Item nine, the um, page, page 71, and that is the re report of the investment consultants performance of the fund are we going to gary or are we going straight to louis on that one uh, i'm happy to go straight to louis i don't know if tom intended to say anything in advance but otherwise very happy to go to louis tom uh, yeah i think we should just go to to louis chair straight away this is obviously um aon's aims new report so it'll be interesting yeah. to, to him and his comments Right, thank you. Louis? Yeah, so this is a, a new format report. It's we've, I think we've lost you, Louis. We've lost, we've lost you. Hello, Louis, are you hearing anything? I can see he's still on the attendee list, Chair. I don't know if he's just. Um, it's typical, isn't it? We got the, we got the first few words out of him, but he's dropped, just dropped yeah. out at a critical moment. Yeah. Um, let me just let me move on then to. Can we do item ten while we're trying to sort that one? Um, David, can you do item ten at this moment in time? Uh, yes, Chair. If you're happy. Um, Item 10, pages 89 through to page 99, are the draft minutes of the April meeting of the Pension Board. Um, I will not go through these in detail, but I would just like to mention um, two or three items, if I may. Um, first one, 
uh, is to remind members that we still have a vacancy for a scheme member representative on the pension board. I know officers are making every effort, effort possible, um, but um, so far we've not yet had anybody express interest. We will just keep um, efforts to fill that vacancy. Um, further down page 90, uh, progress on issues raised by the board. Um, we, I was told quite a while ago that cyber security rep reports on cyber security would be available for consideration uh, in due course. I just wonder whether either um, Gary or, or, or um, Philippa have any idea. I raise this because all of us will be aware that cyber security is number one, if not number two, if not number one, on most lists of concerns. Yeah. Uh, and I just wondered if either Gary or Philippa are able to indicate when, when a report will be available, please. I'll take that. Gary, if you want. Um, yes, David. So I've be, just been informed from TNC that they are working on the reports, but I will follow that up with my contact and see what progress has been made and come back to you on that. Thank you, Philippa. Um, we obviously um, noted that the, the, the death grant issue from a previous meeting was still outstanding uh, and Philippa's covered that earlier. Um, the breaches log, it's a standing item on, on each pension board agenda uh, and the minutes confirm my recommendation to the meeting a little earlier. Um, internal audit reports is a standing item on the agenda. At our last meeting, um, report, uh, um, internal audit work was in progress. Um, uh, we are expecting at our next meeting in July that we will have one, possibly two, internal audit reports to look at. Uh, what I can say to members uh, is that um, I'm not aware, the pension board is not aware of any issue which should be brought to the attention of the pension fund committee. But obviously when we see the reports in July, I will report at a subsequent meeting chair if there are any issues. Um, and then the final thing I, I would mention um, is, is, is training. Uh, and, and where we are in terms of a training programme. We've had, we had an excellent sort of introduction in January, which Philippa and her colleagues sort of presented. Um, as, as officers will be aware, and members possibly will be aware, training is, is rising up the agenda of regulators. And, and, and when the new, uh, when the outcome of the governance review uh, which has been, uh, uh, which is in progress. We know the outcome. Uh, I can imagine that not only pension board members who have a statutory uh, responsibility to 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 keep up to date and abreast of what's going on, there will be some expectation that pension fund committee members will also be uh, required to demonstrate that they're kept up to date uh, uh, on, on, on various uh, uh, issues relating to pension fund operations. I do know that officers who are, who are in this meeting are already considering uh, training options with a number of possible providers, including an internal uh, sort of provision. Uh, and and I, I look forward to hearing the outcome of that uh, in, in, in due course. And finally, if I may just refer, Chair, to your opening remarks about remote meetings. Um, pension board members await with bated breath as to when we'll be able to get back to face-to-face -face meetings. If I say that pension board members were disappointed that the government didn't extend the ability for remote meetings after the 6th of May, um, that will be an understatement, Chair. There is a, there's a real desire for pension board members to actually meet face-to-face, -face, admittedly with social distancing probably and various other requirements, but nevertheless meeting face-to-face. -face. Thank you, Chair. Um, Gary, can we go to you? 
Thanks, Chair. Sorry, I should just introduce myself Shunt, for the purpose of the recording. I'm Gary Field, in Treasurer to the North Yorkshire Pension Fund. Um, I just wanted to pick up a point. David uh, made the point that we are looking at some training courses. Um, so just to reiterate that point, yes, we are. There's several options that we are looking at. Um, we're confident that we can get uh, something out of that. But the other thing I wanted to say was um, over the last 18 months or so, the Pension Fund Committee has been uh, doing lots of work outside of formal committee meetings around investment strategy, uh, which I would regard as having high educational and ed training quality uh, aspects to it. So I just wanted to place that on the record to, to recognise that there's a lot going on that feels like it helps. It's not a structured formal training uh, in the same way, but I think it would actually help to provide the confidence that members are receiving uh, enhanced learning through that uh, through those sessions that we're having. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Gary. Any other comments on the pension board? If not, um, can we just formally note um, that report from David and thank David for that report? David, did you want to come back? Uh, uh, um, thank you, Chair. Just to um, acknowledge Gary's uh, comments uh, and from my perspective, to recognise that I know there is a lot of work that goes on outside <coughs> the formal pension fund committee meetings. So I, 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 I'm, I'm glad, pleased that Gary's asked for this to be recorded in the minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, David. Oh, um, so formal, formally noted, um, can we then move to the next item, just in the interest of clearing up the end of the agenda, can I go to item 11? Any other business? I'm not aware of any other urgent business. So can we... Um, just dis uh, uh, cover that item now. And we are then left with item seven, which is not confidential and eight that is, but Louis has dropped out from obviously with some kind of IT problem. So we haven't got Louis back. So can I ask if um, we could take item seven and that Tom, Tom and Gary, Probably Tom could report on item seven, or is that is that possible, Tom? Um, that's that's fine, Chair. Yes, um, yes. So just to introduce myself, Tom Morrison, head of investments for North Yorkshire Pension Fund. Um, so item seven is the performance report from Aon. This is a, a new format report. Um, it's got a, I suppose, a, um, some higher level indicators, and it's more kind of pictorial than the previous report, which was relatively wordy. So just moving through the report um, on page four. This is effectively a, a kind of summary of the position high level at a glance, um, showing that the assets have fallen slightly over the quarter. Um, performance over the last quarter was um, fairly flat. We've had a, an excellent 2020. Um, so as you can see, the three year relative performance, 4% um, above the benchmark, that's absolutely outstanding and um, you know, significantly ahead of the approximately five and a half percent expectation that we might have with our assets in terms of how they perform. Um, in terms of asset allocation, um, this is something we'll talk about a little bit more in, in item eight, um, but this is a, I suppose, a clearer representation of, of where we are in terms of the fund. So the, the committee agreed the new strategy at the committee meeting in March, um, shown in the long-term strategy column in the middle. Um, the current allocation on the left-hand side, um, you can see that uh, uh, in the variances on the right, you can see there are some fairly significant variances. Um, the big challenge being um, how do we um, uh, how, how do we achieve the target as far as infrastructure is concerned, where our preferred approach is to invest through private markets into, into closed-ended schemes. Um, we also have a significant overweight to absolute return, which is no longer a part of the strategy. Um, those assets will obviously be used to, to fund infrastructure and other assets over time. Um, and there are a number of um, other smaller variances that can be addressed through the, 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 the various routes that we have available now, including PIMCO, which is Border to Coast Core Mac Manager. 
Um, on, on performance, um, briefly mentioned that earlier, but um, you can see the higher level indicators shown on, on page 10. Um, on, on page 11, that's this is quite an interesting chart which shows the, um, the absolute relative performance for each of the managers. You can see that the managers that have that have done well, um, led by Dodge and Cox as a, as a value manager, reflects the, um, the the cycle the market is going through at the moment with um, uh, cyclical stocks such as financials, energy, and so on doing particularly well. Um, Board of the Coasts funds, which include a blend of managers, um, have done well as well, and that's largely on the back of the, the value orientated managers um, within those funds. Um, Bailey Gifford, in um, absolute and relative terms, didn't have a particularly good quarter, but this is on the back of a, uh, an absolutely outstanding 2020. And in this kind of market, we would expect them to underperform. And also right at the bottom in, in relative terms, we've got the, the fixed income allocations, um, which um, you know had a quite poor quarter. Um, largely speaking, that was um, <clears throat> the um, the outperformance or the, the benefit that we received from those asset classes over the whole of 2020 was around about that level. So, so what we've seen over the last 15 months is um, those asset classes have looked kind of fairly flat overall. So though the quarter looks quite poor, it's actually just given back a lot of what we've what we've gained over the previous year. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, a bit more detail on longer term performance on, on page 12, and you can see the outstanding performance there from, from Bailey Gifford. I think um, a since inception figure of 9% per annum is um, something that's obviously served the fund extremely well um, since they were appointed back in back in 2006. Um, then um, in terms of, uh, yeah, I think in terms of market background, I think one of the things that's quite interesting to see also is, is on page 15 is just the um, the impact of the returns in terms of sterling as opposed to local currency terms. So what we've seen recently is a strengthening in sterling. So um, although we have seen um, equity returns, particularly in uh, Europe and, and Japan, be quite strong over the last quarter. Of course, sterling's appreciated, which has um, served to reduce that. But we, you know, we we obviously have seen quite an extended period of um, sterling depreciating in. Uh, uh, in previous periods where um, the reverse was seen. Um, and this is, this, I suppose, an interesting context in terms of a discussion we'll have um, under item eight in relation to um, currency hedging, just to be aware of. Um, and that's all I was really going to see that, say there's a bit more information on the investment outlook in page 16, but perhaps we can go to, to Leslie for a, a few comments on that. Just to let you know, I'm, I'm Back. Thank you for covering it, Tom. Yes, Lou is back as well. So, Leslie, do you want to make any comments? And then I'll come to you anyway, Louis. I've got very little to add to really what Tom said. I don't think I've got anything particularly to comment on. The one thing I would say is that markets are thinking much more now about whether we're going to move into a, a background where inflation is higher over the longer term than was the case over the last 10 years. Oh, yeah. I think that's something to bear in mind as we're thinking about strategy in the future. Otherwise, I've got nothing really to add to what Tom said. Thanks, Leslie. Louis, I know you probably missed most of that, but anything that you particularly want to throw in at this point? We're still not hearing Louis. I think we've lost you again, Chairman. OK, um, Patrick, you wanted to comment. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just an observation, really, maybe a question for Leslie. But, um, you know, I've been on this pension fund for about 12 years and I've never seen a quarter where we've had absolutely no movement in the value of the fund. It's a four and a half billion pound fund. It's down one million pounds. And it slightly concerns me about the outlook for equities. For example, we still have 60 percent of our investment in equities. And, um, you know, anyone who's watching the stock market can see that there's been very little movement in equities over a period of time now. And I'm yeah. just wondering what, what is the outlook, Leslie, and if Louis here, uh, in terms of equities moving forward, because it seems like everything's been priced in. Everyone's expecting a big bounce post-COVID. 
and it's not bouncing at all. It's just static. Um, so I'm just wondering what 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 the outlook is for uh, equities in particular. Well, let's, Leslie, I'll come in first. Will I? I think we saw a big bounce in equities in anticipation of where we now are. So when the vaccine news came out, when it became more likely we were going to get an economic recovery, then markets moved to anticipate that. So now we're in the phase of seeing whether it turns out to be what markets are expecting or not. And hidden below the low, or very low returns from markets is this big shift that's going on between value stocks recovering, going up a long way, and growth stocks lagging, having performed tremendously well. I think the next phase is we see how the recovery goes. Does it go as well as expected? Are there certain areas of markets where recovery doesn't come through at all? How does that get reflected in share prices? But the further out point is, as you see, valuations are high. Um, interest rates may pick up and inflation may pick up, which will test whether markets can go up anymore. I still see long-term returns from here as being quite low. Um, but much will depend in the next 12 months on whether the recovery profile turns out to be in line with what we're expecting or not. I also expect growth stocks to come back into favour again once we get through this little phase, yeah. because it'll come back to stock picking again, as opposed to this period where value stocks have appeared in the sun, really. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, I, I know Christian wants to come in, but can we go to Louis? I'm presuming you're there now, Louis. I can see you again. Any you comment? Try. Yeah. I, I, every time I speak, I seem to be kicked off. So, <laughs> is, is it? Am I still here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I heard Tom covering uh, my report, which was uh, it's going to do me out of a job. <laughs> so where where have we got to? It was really to answer the, the questions that I don't know whether you heard um, Patrick's question. It was about um, where we see um, things going uh, over the, I suppose, short and medium term future in terms of uh, overall stock market prices. That was really where we got to at this point. Yeah, OK. So I, I kind of heard heard where Leslie was coming from, and I think I agree with that. We've seen a, a huge rally um, uh, over the last year, actually, now from from stock markets, initially supported by the kind of fiscal support and also massive monetary stimulus, absolutely massive monetary stimulus. Um, that is now being given another leg up again um, as a result of actually economic recovery coming from the end of lockdown, the result of vaccines and further fiscal stimulus, particularly in the, the US, the details still to go through, but it's looking like it's going to be massive at the same time as continuing short term low interest rates. So, you know, really positive environment for equity, all risk assets, credit and equity markets. Um, I think I, I agree with Leslie. Going forward, those high valuations, you know, mean that, you know, high those high returns are going to be harder to come by. Active management, absolutely going to help. But generally, that feeds through to our, our longer term outlook, you know, lower expected returns. You've enjoyed outsized returns. Going forward, you should expect slightly lower expected returns longer term. But in the medium term, the, you know, the environment is pretty supportive for risk assets. You've got fiscal stimulus, you've got low interest rates. Yeah. I think the other one, John, I wanted to pick up on is inflation, because that is quite rightly something that you, you, you need to think about as a committee, because it affects your assets, but also your liabilities are all inflation linked. Those pensioner benefits are inflation linked. So inflation starts shooting up and up and up, particularly over the long term, that means your liabilities are bigger. And if your assets don't keep pace with that, that's a, that's a problem. So that is something that's worth worth talking about. I think the, the kind of question is, is how much of this, the inflation that we're seeing is short term versus long term. So short term, you know, the, the, the reasons we're seeing it is we've got this massive economic recovery coming and, and you know demand is up because of the recovery this is at the same time that supply 
of you know particularly things like commodities but also you know things involved in manufacturing and it co goes and cuts across everything supply chains are ha you know have had issues whether that's because of covid restrictions you know there's been some you know issues in the sewers and things like that in canals um so that, that, that there's those kind of there's disruptions now arguably both that short term um recovery demand and those covid related supply chain issues should both be just short term so there's the case that actually you know there's a short term increase in inflation but actually longer term that will that will um fall back however it's it, you know there is an argument to be had that there's some you know supply chains could be disrupted longer term there's some bigger trends here in terms of you know shortening supply chains actually you know the the, the kind of end of globalization type uh, theme the china us trade things you know what brexit and things like that going on and also we've still got this 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 fiscal stimulus still you know it's been announced but it's still it's going to take years to go through the system at the same time as central banks saying you know deliberately saying well we we don't care so much about short term inflation so they're letting it run they're keeping the the rates down so there is absolutely a risk there of longer term inflation um our view is that you know that 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 we're not in a long term inflationary environment that the central banks are kind of letting it play in the short term but longer term um we're not in that kind of 1970s really high inflation um for lots of reasons you know the, the union unionization's not there so there's going to be less of the wage demand we think that the the you know manufacturing particularly in the UK is is far smaller we're still going to have there's a lot of global uh, globalization still happening in terms of imports and things like that which have downward pressure on prices so ultimately we think that it it's more of a short term issue than a long term issue but it's definitely something to keep an eye on okay thank you very much um christian you want to come in Thank you, Chair. Yes, just to echo some of the points that have been made and to note that those concerns that are being raised about the relatively poor performance at the moment now of uh, growth-based equities uh, very much, I think, reinforces the, the, the value of the decisions we've made in changing our strategy uh, going forward. And uh, as, as the Fund will know, um, my city council has written to the fund welcoming that change in strategy and encouraging us to look towards uh, investing in green infrastructure to benefit the region and to create jobs. It would be great to hear um, Louis view and others on on what he said about the stimulus going forward and and how much that will also be driving investment in infrastructure. Uh, as part of creating the recovery, both in this country and around the world. So that, you know, am I right in thinking that that longer term view about infrastructure and decarbonisation is, is one of the things that will drive uh, pensions and the economy forwards in the years ahead? Yeah, I, I think the, the carbon transition, if you like, and accelerating uh, that I think could be a real theme for investment markets going forward and i think the you know what's happening that, that you know that the, the, the biden administration in the states is having a real impact on that absolutely now the, the, mm -hmm. you know there's, there's still a lot of uncertainty about e exactly how that's going to pan out but you know i think that we were always expecting there's always a need to for some kind of carbon transition and for opportunities there it feels at the you know early days that that is being accelerated, um, you know, arguably right, rightly so, um, by what's happening in the states, and you know, perhaps more to come from other uh, other economies. Thank you, Leslie. Do you want to comment on that question, or are you happy? To I make? agree. I agree with that. I think it's a, an ongoing, important theme going forward. Um, I think the higher spending by governments. It's going to continue. It's going to take a long time for that to wash out because of the necessity of getting a broader based economic recovery and to cover, as Christian was saying, these type of important environmental themes. And it's that together with the low interest rates, which at the moment, which make me slightly concerned that we'll go into a, a period of higher inflation, 
more choppy waters for markets at some point. Not that we'll get back to the 70s, but the base inflation rate might be at a higher level than would have been the case over the last 10 to 15 years. Yes. So it's not a disaster, but it will have some impact on markets if that were to be the case. Okay, thanks, Leslie. Um, can I now go to uh, Jim? Are you there? Yes, I'm. I'm here. I, I, I just I can't see you, but I assume you are there. Oh, go on. Oh, I I can see myself. Oddly okay. enough. <laughs> Anyway, I, I just wanted to make a comment and, and to say that to, to uh, a couple of things that, that I've always said, I, I, I've always said, and, and it's a fact that this is a long term fund. And indeed, next month on the 11th of uh, July will be 20 years since I attended my first pension fund. Uh, meeting and and it and at that time uh, we were 35 percent funded as compared to 125 percent funded but in between that time we we moved up from 35 only to go down to 35 percent funded in 2009 so it is it is a long-term uh, thing that we we need to consider and our purpose is to provide pensions to uh, the people who are members of the pension fund and i i think this is a, a very well run pension fund and i think particularly for the uh, the newer members of the of 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 the fund that this fund has performed uh over the years over the long term to where we are now uh, in in a very uh, commendable way, I, I, I was involved with a lo lots of local, uh, sorry, lots of uh, pension funds uh, earlier in my uh, career. As as people may know, um, I, I'm a chartered accountant and was involved uh, very heavily in the in the Scottish financial sector and I, I remember days when there were pensions holidays which uh, helped to stock market enormously because companies listed companies would would have large surpluses in the pension funds and uh, now we see it's the opposite but but i think we have a commendable performance and i think uh, looking at this pension fund and the members over over the years it's all a matter of being able to take a, a view on risk that, that that we come up against risk all the time and i mean so as members who have been on this committee uh, know i'm a great equities uh, man and equities have served me well there have been ups and downs and uh, if you look to the longer terms uh, the only way you can uh, sort of remain or contain value is by having some uh, greater equity exposure but i don't want to go into that the other thing is that the, the whole world has changed since uh si since i uh got involved I means so i i remember some of you may remember the three-day week in the 1970s when uh, there were minor strikes and all sorts of things and and indeed when I joined this council and joined this committee uh, we'd just come out of the foot and mouth uh, problem so there are all sorts of things that are going to to cause problems and I think uh, the climate change is now being given the uh, in the the amount of work being done on climate change is is necessary and is is probably we we've left it uh, too long but but it's important that we we get that there are going to be major challenges but the the problems we have at this had at the start and uh, b before when I in my time on the committee was we went into equities because it was the only way we could get 
uh, growth out of the uh, the position we were in, and it was not a position that we. It was a position we inherited at at, at that time because of decisions made before. But I think we must look forward to remember we're here to provide pensions, uh, which will be a major part of the income for many of the members of the scheme. We need to have a, a good equity base. I'm, I'm not getting into that argument again, but and we really need to have intelligence uh, of, and knowledge of what is going on. And, th and this committee spends considerable time with its various advisors uh, looking forward, but there will be serious threats. But I think we should be looking as we go forward. As I come to the end of, uh, you know, it's coming nearly to the end of my time on this on this committee. Uh, but uh, I think we should be seeing the threats as uh, as opportunities. But I think the, the whole world has become much more complicated. There were no arguments about value and and growth and uh, people uh, were, were, were sort of having great art. And there's now a great investment industry uh, at, at that time. Life was very simple when I, well, it wasn't very simple, but we, we had uh, so types of uh, investments that, that have now gone, like uh, the mutually owned insurance companies, which was a major part of, of of my career, and investment trusts are still around. But but I think it's important we look to the long term. But uh, but I, I I don't think we should be, you know, it's not right that we we congratulate ourselves but but I think we should take credit for the way this this uh, fund has been has been managed there is a bit of good fortune there's an, but there's an awful lot of good judgment and I think if we if we remember that it's uh, we're looking to the, uh, the the longer term when many of us well won't won't be here unfortunately or maybe fortunately but uh, I, I I think these these are these are good figures. There will be ups and downs, but uh, I I think the, the the we know the risks, and it's how we deal with them. And we certainly deal with things properly here, and everything is considered very carefully. And I I, I pay tribute to the members of the committee. And those former members of the committee, it, it's been, I'm, I'm not giving up just yet, but it's it, it, it's been uh, very interesting and a pleasure to be on this committee. And I think to get results like this uh, may go forward, but we are going to have, in, I, I have a, a more bullish view on, on inflation. I think inflation will rise. I think we will come back to the days of uh, higher interest rates. I hope we never get back to the days of 15 uh, percent and I hope we never get back to the days of I spent a lot of time doing research on in inflation adjusted accounts. Uh, but uh, there we go. Uh, right. That's Thank my you. comments. Thank you, Jim. We've moved on to a number of items there. Sounded a bit like a farewell speech, and I know it isn't. So yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for the comments, Jim. And we have moved into what is going to be the next item as well. Are there any more speakers who would like to comment on the performance of the fund over the past quarter in particular? Item, which is actually item eight. Uh, sorry which is actually item nine on the agenda. If not, all I will do is say, can we formally note um, the performance results as presented by various people and thank Tom for stepping in at the last minute to, to actually give that report, which is an Aon report. But so thank you, Tom, for, for doing that. Uh, any comments from anyone else? If not, then let's formally note and then we will move to item eight. 
Chairman, right. before we move to this item, I'll just note that this is a private item and yeah. therefore the live broadcast will now end as this will be the final item on the agenda. Yeah.